Today we're going to start chapter 5. In chapter 5 we're going to talk about quadratic functions and also complex numbers in a few more days. But in the first section of chapter 5 we're going to be talking about the roots of a quadratic equation. Equations have roots or answers if you set them equal to zero. So if you're going to talk about the, the roots or the real roots of a polynomial function, they are really the x-coordinates of the points at which the graph of the function intersects the x-axis. So we're going to graph these things and look at where it touches the x-axis. And these points are also called the x-intercepts. So what we're going to do first is we're going to use a graphing calculator and we're going to find two roots. Quadratic equations have two roots. And if you want to find something graphically, the easiest thing to do is to pull out your graphing calculator and put the function in y equals and take a look at the x-intercept. So we'll just press y equals on our graphing calculator and put x squared plus 5x minus 24. And then if you look at the graph, you can see that it intersects the x-axis in two places. Over here at x equals, if you count over, it's negative 8, and over here at positive 3. Now you can't see this whole parabola. If you press the window button and you change your y minimum to go down a little bit further, maybe what we want to go down to negative 30, and then if you want to see the whole graph, you can pretty much see the whole parabola there. So all I want you to do is um, put on this x-axis a negative 8. It's almost like setting up a number line. And then over here, a positive 3. If you want to put a bunch of other tick marks, you can, but it's really not necessary. Let me um, zoom in on this a little bit so you can see it better. So what we're doing is we're just graphing this like this. And the roots are right here where it intersects the x-axis. So we would say the roots are x equals negative 8, x equals positive 3. Over here, if we want to do 2x squared, I'm just going to insert a 2. 2x squared, change the plus to a minus 5x, and change the minus 24 to a minus 3. If we want to graph that, we could press our graph button again, and this time it intersects right here, and it's actually between a couple of tick marks. So what we can do to find this x-intercept is on your graphing calculator, you're going to press the second button, second, calculate, and we're going to call um, these the zeros because it's when y equals zero. So if you press option two, zero, and hit enter, it's going to ask you to put your cursor to the left of where it intersects the x-axis. So we're going to put our cursor up above here a little bit and hit enter. And then it's going to ask us to put our cursor to the right of the x-intercept and hit enter. And we don't ever have to guess. You can just hit enter. And then it tells you where the zero is, or in other words, the root. This root is at negative 0.5. So if we wanted to put this root here, we could put a negative 0.5 here, and then over here on this side, in it, it intersects at x equals 3, I believe. So if you wanted to calculate it, you can just do second, calculate, another 0, and this time, when it says put your cursor to the left of the intersection, we would put it here where it's to the left of this intersection, and then to the right, and then hit enter again, and then this other zero is at x equals 3. So we would put another zero here at x equals 3. And then if we wanted to draw this parabola, we could draw it like this, and we would say the roots are x is equal to negative 0.5 and x is equal to positive 3. The next one, I'm going to I'm going to change my um, window on this next one. We're going to put x squared minus two. So I'm going to get rid of everything except for this minus two. I'm going to press the zoom button, zoom option six. I'm going to get a standard window here. Now this parabola 
goes to the x-axis somewhere between negative 1 and negative 2 and between positive 1 and positive 2. So I'm going to just put uh, two tick marks there and this is going through the y-axis at y is equal to negative 2. It comes up like this. And to get the two roots of these on the graphing calculator, again, you can hit second calculate, calculate the zero, put the cursor to the left of the x-intercept, hit enter, then to the right and hit enter and hit enter again. And it's negative 1.414. If it doesn't ask you to round, always round it to three decimal places. So the roots are x is equal to negative 1.414. And then over the right hand side, second calculate again a zero. This time we're going to put our cursor here. When it says left, we're going to get to the left of that one and then get our cursor to the right of it and hit enter. And then we have a positive 1.414. So those are the two roots in that particular quadratic equation. And this last one, a negative 3x squared plus x plus 4. And we, if we graph that, this will be an upside down parabola. And it looks like this parabola goes through the x-axis hmm, somewhere around maybe negative 1. Let's see for sure. Second calculate is 0. Now when it says to get the cursor to the left, you're going to go over there to the left of it, to the right of it, and then guess. And your first zero is at negative one. And now we're going to figure out the second zero in a minute. So we'll put this at a negative one on our graph. And then we're going to calculate the zero. And now we're going to move the cursor to the left of the zero and then to the right of the zero and hit enter and 1.33333 is actually one and a third and one and one third is the same thing as four thirds so you can call it a whole bunch of things but we'll, we'll put it between here and this is an upside down parabola which goes like this and the roots are x equals negative 1 and x is equal to 1.3 with a line over it. That's 1.3 repeating. So there you go. That's, this, that's how you um, find that's how you find the um, roots on a graphing calculator. That's graphically. Now we're going to next solve the quadratic equations algebraically using algebra. And there's a method called complete the square on this. And complete the square is you have to rewrite this quadratic equation. And the four steps in order to, to um, solve these quadratic equations graphically is um, you're going to write the quadratic equation in x squared plus bx, and then you're actually going to put a blank in here, is equal to c plus blank. So you're going to have to insert two blanks in here. And then to complete the square means you're going to add some number in these two blanks. It's going to be the same number. And that number is a half of the b value. The b is the coefficient of the x term. So you're going to take the half of b, you're going to square it, in, and you're going to add it to both sides of this quadratic equation. So you're actually going to fill in the blanks on here. And when I go through these examples, you'll see what I mean. On the left-hand side, you're going to get an, equa a f an expression that's factorable. And I'll show you how to factor the left-hand side. And then after you get done with that, you're going to take the square root of the left and the right-hand side and solve. So this is just an alternate way to find a quadratic equation's roots. So these next examples I'm asking you to solve using complete the square. And remember, the two x values are called the roots of the equations. So the first thing we have is x squared plus 12x plus 2. So what we have to do is we have to subtract 2 from each side so we can get it into this form that we want up 
that's similar to this um, first step. So we just bring the x squared down and the 12x down, and then we insert a plus blank. And on the right-hand side, 0 plus negative 2 is negative 2, and then we put a plus blank. So we add the plus blanks on both sides. Step 2 says we're going to put this number in here. It's the same number. It's going to be half of b. I'll, over here I'm going to say b is equal to 12 because b is the, the number that's in front of the x term. So half of b, or b over 2, is equal to 6. And then b over 2 squared is what we want, is 6 squared, which is 36. So we're going to put a 36 in both blanks. We're just adding 36 to both sides of the equation. And the reason why we do that is because now we can factor this. The factors of 36 that add up to 12 are 6 and 6. So you could write this as x plus 6 times x plus 6, or you can just call this x plus 6 squared. That's this factored. And now you're going to add negative 2 plus 36, and you're going to get 34 out of that. So that's step two. No, that's actually step three, because we've just factored this. Now going on to step four, we're going to take the square root of both sides. And over on the right-hand side, you have to put a plus and a minus here. That's really important to have the plus and minus. Maybe you want to put a little circle this, because that's important that it's a plus or minus over here when you take the square root. When you take the square root of something squared, it just gets rid of the two. So you're going to take the square root of both sides, and when you take the square root of something squared, you're just left with the radicand, which is just x plus 6. And x plus 6 is equal to that plus or minus the square root of 34. And the only thing you have to do is subtract 6 from each side. And what you have is x is equal to negative 6 plus or minus the square root of 34. And that's the end of the problem. You have two answers, negative 6 plus the square root of 34, negative 6 minus the square root of 34. Second example, what we're going to do first is add 11 to both sides. And you have x squared plus 6x. Then you're going to insert the plus blank is equal to 0 plus 11 is 11. And then you're going to put a plus blank in there. Make sure you put plus blanks in both. Now you're going to take, now b is 6, half of b is 3, and 3 squared is 9. So you're going to add 9 to both sides. Remember, b over 2 squared goes in the blank. And now you have this, what are the factors of 9 that add up to 6? Well, 3 and 3. So this factors into x plus 3 squared. And that's equal to 11 plus 9, which is 20. The next step is to take the square root of both sides. And on the right-hand side, put a plus or minus. The square root of x plus 3 squared is just x plus 3. So plus or minus. Now the square root of 20, remember that breaks down into 4 times 5. And you're just going to take, take this simplified version, which is 2 times the square root of 5. The square root of 4 is 2, and 5 stays underneath the radical. And then the last step is to subtract 3 from each side. So you get x is equal to negative 3 plus or minus 2 times the square root of 5. And they can't be combined because that's not a radical, and that is. And so you're done with that problem. The next example, you're going to add 24 bo to both sides. And so you're going to get x squared minus 2x, and then you have to insert the plus blank. 0 plus 24 is 24 plus blank. Now you're going to take half of negative 2. Well, half of negative 2 is negative 1, but negative 1 squared is equal to positive 1. So you're going to put a 1, a positive 1. This is always a plus sign here, always. So x squared minus 2x plus 1. And that would factor, the factors of 1 that add up to negative 2 are negative 1 times negative 1. So it's x minus 1 squared, 24 plus 1 is equal to 25. Now you're going to take the square root over here and plus and minus the square root over here. So you get x minus 1 is equal to plus or minus. The square root of 25 is just a 5 without a radical. And now you're going to add 1 to both sides. So you're going to get x is equal to 1 
plus or minus 5. Well, these are neither of these are radicals. They're like terms, so they can be combined. So what you have is two answers. x is equal to 1 plus 5, and x is equal to 1 minus 5. Well, 1 plus 5 is equal to 6, and 1 minus 5 is equal to negative 4. So those are the two answers to this. You don't even have to write it in radical form because 25 is a perfect square. And you could have actually gotten this answer by factoring this because the factors of negative 24 that add up to negative 2 are minus 6 and plus 4. You could have factored this into x minus 6 times x plus 4. This is the only one that's been factorable so far. So x equals 6 and x equals negative 4. And you got it the same way doing complete the square. When you have a coefficient in front of the x squared term, what you're going to do is you're going to divide everything out, the whole thing out by whatever this coefficient is. So divide by 3, everything, whatever this number is. So divide this by 3, this, this, and 0 divided by 3 is still 0. So this leaves you with x squared minus 4x minus 7 is equal to 0. Remember, 0 over 3 is still 0. Now you're going to add 7 to both sides, x squared minus 4x plus blank, because we're going to add 7, is equal to 7 plus blank. Half of negative 4 is negative 2. Negative 2 squared is positive 4, so you're going to add 4 to both sides. The factors of positive 4 that add up to negative 4 are negative 2 and negative 2. 7 plus 4 is 11. And then you're going to take the square root over here. It's plus and minus the square root of 11. So this becomes x minus 2 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 11. And then the last step is just to add 2 to both sides. And you get x is equal to 2 plus or minus the square root of 11. There are two answers here. 2 plus the square root of 11, 2 minus the square root of 11. Over here, we're going to put a 0 on one side first. So let's subtract 3x from each side. And let's add 8 to both sides. So we can get this equal to 0. Quadratic should be set equal to 0 before you do anything. So this is going to give us negative 3x squared. 6 minus 3 is 3x. Negative 2 plus 8 is positive 6. And now because we have a negative 3 as a coefficient, you're going to divide everything through by this coefficient of negative 3. So divide this by negative 3, this by negative 3, this by negative 3, this by negative 3, both sides. And that would leave you with positive x squared. 3 over negative 3 is negative 1x. 6 over negative 3 is negative 2. 0 over negative 3 is still 0. So with complete the square, what you're going to do is add 2 to both sides. And you get x squared minus x plus blank is equal to 0 plus 2 is 2. Now, b is not an even number. b is actually equal to negative 1. And negative 1 divided by 2, b over 2 is negative 1 half. b over 2 squared is negative 1 half squared. Negative 1 half times negative 1 half is positive 1 fourth. So you're going to add a 1 fourth into each of these blanks. And when you factor this, the factors of 1 fourth that add up to negative 1 are just the b over 2 values. So this is going to be x minus 1 half. Whatever b over 2 is, that's what goes in here, which is squared. 2 plus 1 fourth, you can pull out your calculator if you want to. 2 plus 1 fourth, and then you can hit math, option 1 frac, and that'll give you, whoops, and that'll give you 9 fourths. So we're going to leave this as 9 over 4, because now what you have is when you take the square of the left and the plus or minus square root, over the, square root of the right, you're going to get x minus 1 half is equal to plus or minus the square root of 9 fourths. But the square root of 9 fourths is 3 halves because the square root of 9 is 3 and the square root of 4 is 2. And then the only other thing that's left to do is add 1 half to each side. 
So you get x is equal to 1 half plus or minus 3 halves. And there are actually two answers here. x is equal to 1 half plus 3 halves, and x is equal to 1 half minus 3 halves. Well, 1 half plus 3 halves is equal to 4 halves, which is equal to 2. And 1 half minus 3 halves is negative 2 over 2, which is equal to negative 1. So you have two answers here, a negative 1 and a positive 2. And way back here, when you looked at this quadratic equation, you might have seen that it's factorable because there are factors of negative 2 that add up to negative 1. x minus 2 times x plus 1 would be equal to 0 if you wanted to factor it. So x equals 2 and x equals negative 1, and those are the same answers that we got with the complete the square process. And that's it for today. See you tomorrow.